All the nuclear weapons stockpile management and nuclear weapons technology come from two locations in the United States, Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico, which is surrounded by a giant plot of empty land, and the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, which is a square mile facility located right next to a city of 90,000 people. If a large-scale disaster or nuclear accident happened here, it would affect the entire Bay Area, comprised of San Francisco, Oakland, with over 7 million people living in it. The U.S. used to blow up full-scale nuclear weapons in open air until the 1963 Limited Test Ban Treaty, which permitted the continuation of nuclear testing underground. In 1992, Congress passed the Nuclear Testing Moratorium Act, which banned all nuclear testing. Now, to compensate for the loss of full-scale underground nuclear testing, the Department of Energy created the Stockpile Stewardship Program, which built new facilities that test different components of a nuclear weapons explosion, using a supercomputer to put them all together. So, okay, the Livermore Lab is testing some nuclear components. No big deal. It's not like they've been responsible for a giant radiation leak or anything, right? Uh, actually, FOIA requests have revealed that the lab has already released over a million curies of radiation since they opened in the 50s. To give you some context, that's about the same amount of radiation that was released in the bombing of Hiroshima. Furthermore, a 30-year study from the State Health Department found that children born in Livermore have six times the expected rate of malignant melanoma and are three times more likely to have brain cancer. Another, more elusive site buried in the hills behind the lab is called Site 300. It's a live fire explosives test range where they blow up highly radioactive compounds. Now, my brother and I found that they're testing depleted uranium and tritium, the radioactive hydrogen in the hydrogen bomb in open air tests. And as you can see, Site 300 happens to be located in a very high velocity wind area. Well, we went to Livermore earlier this year to talk to the residents and see if they even knew of the existence of Site 300, the purpose of the Lawrence Livermore Lab, and the potential danger they both pose to the community. Have you heard anything about what they're doing there? Well, nuclear research, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, nuclear engineering development type stuff. I can hear what they do at the lab, but I'm not quite sure what it is they're really doing. I know there's uh, some medical uh, a lot of it is uh, research into different materials, I've heard. Uh, I know they have a bio lab, I think. Anything from nuclear stuff to making weapons, I couldn't know. Have you heard about Site 300? I have not. Site 300? 300. 300, no. Uh, I haven't heard about Site 300. Site 300 is a, it's a, uh, where they actually test the nuclear material. They, they blow up uh, depleted uranium and radioactive tritium in the hills uh, where it's pretty high velocity wind. Where we live. Wonderful. It's not good. Good Lord, that's horrible. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's something new. It's amazing how disempowered communities are where we're afraid to ask questions about a super secret nuclear weapons facility in our own backyard. The truth of the matter is that this country has a nuclear weapons complex that is still stuck in the Cold War era. Our military has over 5,000 nuclear weapons, 2,000 of which are on readiness, readiness alert at all times. When polled, 80% of the American population say that they would feel safer if no country, including the U.S., had nuclear weapons. Because in the back of our minds, we all know that at any moment, by mistake, by miscalculation, or by madness, life as we know it could end. I grew up next to this lab without knowing anything about it. I was just like the people that you just saw. The notion I want to leave you with tonight is that it's not too late to empower yourself in your community. Ask questions and demand answers.